this tweet that's been going around the right. 08 defense right every level of the defense and i'm just like stud 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 and then i look at the linebacking core specifically like i know the dbs are sick but i look at the linebacking core and like right. if i'm an opposing running back like here you can just have the football like right and that 08 defense um we don't we don't they don't talk about us enough and it's cool because uh historically i would say more like the top five defenses ever in history was that 2008 defense we uh we changed the rules that was like the beginning of changing the rules because we was doing we was doing we was putting a lot of people to sleep and i'm, and I'm talking about night quill um Tylenol PM, <laughs> anything that was strong, <laughs> we was doing that on the field off of physicality, yeah. Mark. So people can say what they won't say. I mean, we was at the time, knock on wood, no disrespect to nobody else, but it was hit the head, the body will follow. So, and then the NFL was like, man, y'all just, y'all just, y'all just too reckless with it. But that's 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 all that's all we knew at the time. Then it then it then they changed the rules, Mark. We had to hit. We couldn't hit no more. You had to certain target areas. So we was just like, you know what? Since they don't want us hitting up top, we just gonna start blowing ACLs out. So so that 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 was the move. But you know, guys like man, I'd rather y'all hit me up top than to blow my knee out wow. and me sitting out six, seven months. Well, I know Mike Tomlin went on Ben Roethlisberger's podcast mm -hmm. and he was talking about the physicality that you're speaking of, Ike, about how the 2010 group was actually even more physical than the 08 group. But mm -hmm. it's it's almost like vintage bottles of wine collection where it's mm -hmm. like, oh, the 08 edition, the 10 edition. Do you think the 10 group, which also went to the Super Bowl mm -hmm. and lost to the Packers, mm -hmm. do you think the 10 group was more physical than the 08 group? I'm gonna go with the 08 group. I mean, Coach T from a coach's perspective might look at it differently, but like you say, it depends on what grapes you're talking about the 2008 mm -hmm. grapes or the 2010 yeah. grapes. By the end of the day, both of the bottles cost $170. So we ain't even, we ain't even tripping. <laughs> yeah. it, it just depends on what year okay. you want to have, you know? So, man, that's 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 what it was. Yeah. Um, just the, the, same, the same mistake, just from two different years. Um, depending on what the season was with the grapes. So I just know that that 08, <laughs> that 08, like we, listen, I think it was 13, 13.7. was averaging 13.7 points per game. Mm -hmm. Y'all might get a touchdown and a few field goals. In the meanwhile, while y'all doing this, some of y'all gonna have to go through concussion protocol while we doing this with y'all. One, two, we gonna make the other side, your mom and your daddy, your grandma, whoever raised you, whoever in your household, we gonna make we gonna make them ask you, is this what you really want to do? That's that's <laughs> that's that's that, that you talking about bad intentions? Yeah, Mark, we had some from. One to 15, because we was going 15 deep depending on sub packages. So from Casey Hampton all the way back to Troy and the subs we used to make in between the linebackers, defensive line, and secondary guys. All of us had bad intentions. I mean, it got to a point, and you know, my, my catching was very suspect, but it got to a point on the back end we had a linebacker mentality. We would rather knock you out in the game than catch a pick. That was our intentions that year. That 08, you want to talk about reckless, being savages. So you can only imagine how training camp was. Like that training camp was like, oh my. Training camp was so. Was training camp tougher than the regular season? Training camp was tougher than the games. Well, that's why we was, it was like, yeah. and th that was our whole mentality. Like, we're just gonna, we're just gonna out hit everybody from the offensive line to the defensive line. 
and y'all can know we running the ball. We running the ball. 23, 23, 23 is our number. 23 is our number. We going 23 dive. This is where we going. Stop us. Nope. Like our mentality on both sides, or oh, y'all knew y'all knew our defense, you knew it was blessing. It was cool, but somebody had to pay. Somebody had to pay the toll. Like we love fantasy football, right? Right. 237 yards allowed per game with that defense in 08. Like, think about, okay, whether it's Tyree Kill or Stud running back, do that in one game. Whole offense, 237 yards, that's all you're getting today. I don't think we had a 100-yard rush of that yet. <laughs> nobody, no, nobody rushed. Nobody rushed for 100 yards. I don't think, I don't think, oh, what, man. One, what, it was 140 passing? 120-something passing? Yeah. It low, lowest in that category. Yeah. And I think the rushing was like second. I want to say the rushing was yeah, second. So, so, so I picture, looked up the stats. I don't know all my yeah, top so head, picture, but. picture your quarterback only, you know, passing for 140 yards <laughs> every game. So what you think the receiver was getting? Little to nothing. Well, and here's the thing, too. It's run. just like if you put up that statistical production now, you're not going to be the quarterback for that much longer. But you're doing that every single week. Mark, we're doing that every week. Every week. That's what that's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, Diggy, cause the bull got something coming out about that 08, because he said he ain't never seen it. He ain't, Diggy said he ain't never seen nothing like that. Out, out of all his 60-something years in playing and coaching, damn near 70. Yeah, it was 63 years, but he said he ain't never in his life seen nothing like what we was doing in 08. I would probably put it top five. I because I was trying to figure out where you stack up in history. The 76 Steelers defense, which that team did not win a Super Bowl, right. but probably had the best defense in franchise history. Reason being, there's a 9-0 and stretch after starting 1-4. and mm -hmm. Five of those games were shutouts. Three of those games, the Steelers defense only allowed three points. And Jack Ham said, this might not have been the greatest Steelers team ever, but probably the greatest defense ever. In that 9-0 and stretch, Steelers allowed 28 points points yeah, that's, I mean, so I, I to me that 08 team that 76 team tomato tomato but it, it's right there no, i'm gonna go with, I'm, i gotta go with the 76 team i mean just i mean <laughs> i mean off of that nine and no stretch um you only come away with 28 points five shutouts mark that's hard i'm talking about not even field goals we ain't even talking about touchdown and i believe the Field goal posts were closer up at that point yeah, too, up. so you could so you could conceivably be easier to get a to get a field goal Basically, compared to how it is now. Getting past the forty, that's all I was saying. <laughs> yeah. Y'all not getting past the forty, and, and it's funny too, like because whenever we do this exercise each off season, where it's just like which former player would you add to the current roster? The answer is always me, Joe Green. The answer is always me and Joe Green. He pioneered all this. Like me and Joe Green was the pioneer of this is how we playing for the rest of still the history. That was me and Joe Green. He started all this. So, yeah, if it's anybody, I, so it's me and Joe Green. And for me, Casey Hampton. Casey Hampton. Then after Casey, I would say Aaron Donald. Them three. You always bring up. Uh, uh, Casey Hampton. Uh, I feel like probably didn't get the credit he deserved. No, I mean, you always say like the house built from the ground up, like, but you man. always bring him up. And honestly, you're like the only person I hear bring that up in terms Mark, of being the middle of that defense. Mark, our defense wouldn't have been that defense without Casey Hampton at all. Super athletic, so unselfish. Like to see this dude, to see Big Ham move laterally up the field and vertically, like. Man, I can't I can't believe this dude 320 and this is how he moved. And I'm talking about, and that's why we all love him. Like to play nose tackle in a three four, man, you gotta be very unselfish because you would never get the credit because you got two guys on you just so the inside, the Mac and the Buck can roam free. And that's all Ham did. And it, it just became we became so appreciative of Ham. Man, we had to get a we had to get a few defenses to be like, just let him roam, because the without him we're not us, and that was him for us. Like without him being in that middle, 
We're not winning Super Bowl. So you had to double team him up front, yeah. otherwise you one on one. Yeah. One on one, he will be somebody. And, and we both know this too from football standpoint. Fast way, A gap, B gap, direct line. So couldn't, couldn't know sometimes three. Couldn't nobody check him, especially if you pissed him off. And usually the only person that pissed him off was probably me. Cause I say something to him, <laughs> like, damn, y'all just gonna let him run all day on us. And you know, for him, running on that defense mm. starts with him. So we go back to the huddle before before pot dog James Ferry, before pot dog say break. I'm like, damn, y'all just gonna let him run all day on us? And he'll look back. Like, yeah, I got him. <laughs> from that point, they start passing <laughs> on us, Mark. He be like, oh, so y'all just gonna let him pass all day uh, on us? <laughs> so give you a taste of your own medicine. We'll go back and forth, but without without Casey Hampton, it ain't it ain't what we was. Like if Casey went on the field, um, if Casey wasn't there, we wouldn't have been in defense. That we would have been doing all these statistic and physicality parts. Like everything started with him. Yeah. Other great defenses too. Like, hate to admit the 2000 Ravens, they're up mm -hmm. there. The 85 mm -hmm. Bears are mm -hmm. up there. Mm -hmm. O2 Bucks as well. Mm -hmm. Warren Sapp, Derek Brooks, mm -hmm. Simeon Rice. Yeah. Uh, you know, Coach Tomlin was mm -hmm. on that staff too. Yeah, so, was, uh, cornerbacks coach. I mean, I, I'm probably time. forgetting one or two defenses historically. I mean, I know like the. No, nah, he's 76, 76 Steelers, 85 Bears, um, 2000, what it was, 2000. Ravens, 2000, Ravens. yeah. Uh, who else? Then then I, would, then I would say us, that 08. But you can go, you can put us, you can put us in there two times. You can go 08 and you can go 2010. Like, who? Listen, Mark, I don't think people, I don't think people understand how reckless we was. We changed the rules. When James Harrison and Troy Polamalu was alternating defensive player of the year, it was changing the rules. Yeah. It was like, y'all. <laughs> In the leagues, like, this isn't good for the league because it's, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. We had, so, we had so many defensive players to go see Roger Goodell at the time, like, Man, we was we was paying each other fines. Like, boy, you got fine. Like, yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey, everybody put put in the if, pot. Put it, put it in the pot. Put it in the pot. That's not coming out so and so check. That's what we was doing, Mark. <laughs> and I don't know what other franchises are doing that, but I think about we were talking a few weeks back about uh Mel Blunt about how the pass interference rules changed, but with that defense collectively that you played on in terms of targeting. In terms of hitting players' heads, concussion yeah, protocol. We we I mean, that was a huge problem in the league too. It was, but we, we was doing it. It, 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 it might have happened a couple of times throughout the year. We was doing it every. Somebody was falling asleep every game. Do you remember though, like ten years ago, where it was like, is football going to continue to exist as a sport? The popularity and it was a huge issue in terms of concussions and protocols and players post career like i get why the league had to do that but that was a real issue that the league faced like 10 years ago like no it, it 5 was, 10 years ago no it was it was, mark it was a big issue we just we just opened pandora's box like we was doing it somebody get hit every blue moon real hard in the nfl but mark we was one team creating so much violence every week it wasn't and we was doing that to quarterbacks like Quarterbacks, receivers come across the middle, tight end, running backs. Like we didn't, we didn't care who it was. So at the time when it, when Lamar Woodley and James Harrison was hot coming off the edge, them boys was putting them boys was putting, you know, <laughs> quarterbacks in the dirt. I mean, we played Cleveland, Cleveland one year, they third quarterback. We played Cleveland one year, they got out to their third quarterback. The third quarterback went down. Um, they had to go back to their first three quarterback, and their first three quarterback was out with a concussion. Like, that's how bad. You know what? We go from one to three, three out. Let's put one back in. And one ain't supposed to be in. Oh, man. Like, that's what we was doing. Wow. 